I got stuff for you. Holy moly. I need to get some snakes and release them around my house. Uh, but they love eating people. They love eating kids. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. corn, corn. Every day that you open your mouth, I know, right? I'm more convinced that you're abducted by aliens. <laughs> no. And it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going on and going. And she goes, what the? These are idiots. I was laughing reading this because I already knew how you would feel. Idiot. What part (laughs) of the story fits your balloon? Well, this isn't a UFO. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh, yeah, Mothman. Well, everyone, I think we know exactly what it is. So say it all with me. It was the Sandhill Crane. Would you try it? No. You wouldn't eat it? No. Why? Because they're probably toxic. There'd be a lot of poop in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a six-foot alligator go swinging through the air and slam into a tree. Welcome back to Cryptids of the Corn Bug. Now, every time you do that, it reminds me of the uh, televangelist. I am the great and powerful mystery. <laughs> and I'm Jay, clone uh, 13. So the f- already off on a tangent. 13, what? Is that, but doing interviews more lately, getting back into the rhythm of being on other people's shows and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And whenever I introduce myself, it's always like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the great and powerful mystery. I'm Justin. Yeah. Because it's like, it's not your show. Right. It's just like a humble like yeah. version of it. Because, you know, other yeah. podcasts a lot of time can't listen to your, your show. You know, it's right. just something we understand in this category because there's so many podcasts. Like, we it's produce it ourselves. Yeah. We produce 25-something hours, I feel like, a week sometimes. Yeah, and other shows we do. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, and help produce. And But no, so it's a lot. So you never know. So I'm like, is that – I don't want to sound stupid and these people not know that that's one of the things. I am the great – you know. Right, yeah. <laughs> I wear a corn hat and I have a an amethyst staff. Right. And a and, cape. And a cape, yes. Fear me. Fear me. <laughs> No, we're super excited. Uh, let's see, top of house stuff. I don't have anything written down. We're getting almost to the season finale. It's like right there, the tip of the tongue. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Are you excited? Very. It may be either the smallest or the biggest one ever. Okay, that's quite the range. <laughs> it is. Well, <laughs> I guess no, because this, because this, the smallest is, I don't know, what's the I, smallest one? I, I think the I don't, shortest has been seven hours. Either way, it's still quite the range. What's the longest one? Probably been 10, 11. Too long, maybe? Because some of yeah, you know, too long? No, they've never been too long. Oh, okay. For me, like trying to survive in this. We're going to record 24 hours this season finale straight. It's going to it's gonna happen. We're going to do the 24-hour podcast one day. Uh, it's happening. Actually, it's next happen. week, we're recording. No, so, yeah, uh, Ohio Bigfoot Jamboree. Tickets are, I think we only got 20 tickets left or something like that. As of when this air, when we're recording this. Right, yeah. Tickets are almost sold out. They're moving fast, yeah. Uh, thank you for everybody participating in the hidden message on one of the episodes. So just so everybody knows that sometimes there's hidden messages on episodes. So you should listen to the whole episode. I won't tell you where the hidden message is, but just listen. You just kind of did, though. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't. You should listen to the whole thing, guys. Well, some people skip over parts. That's true. Like the ads and stuff like that, which I get. But sometimes you miss secret messages in the middle. I skip through the ads. I do too. Yeah. Uh, no. So yeah, Hot Bigfoot Jamboree is coming up. Got all kinds of awesome, exciting stuff coming for that. It's it's going to be huge. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're super excited. It's going to just be a ball. You know, just come out and have a ball with us. Yeah. Um, Main goal is to just have fun and inform you about Bigfoot. Yeah. Merch site. We had to switch merch companies, so I think prices went up like a dollar fifty on your guys' end. We make less money on t-shirts, but I didn't want to charge extraordinary amounts per t-shirt. Right, yeah. I, just, I don't care. I, I I enjoy seeing the t-shirts out there more than anything else. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, but yeah, no, all kinds of stuff. Like, the bus, as of this coming out, the next round of t-shirt winners should be being released either when this comes out or the following week. Okay. So check out the next three designs that will be released. Uh, super exciting for that. Um, anything else? Top of house? Check out Patreon. Um, and then the Flavors of the Forest. Well, save that. Okay. The, you'll get a whole ad. Flavorsforest.com forward slash corn. Yep. All right. So. 
Sorry. Please stop kicking the table, young man. <laughs> Creaking. With your dirty feet. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Pot corn dare kettle you? black there. <laughs> I'm not even going to look at yours. Talons. Talons. No, so we have a listener, a Patreon member, a good time friend. A long time. Yeah. A, a friend now. A, a man that likes gunpowder. Okay. And that's, napalm. That's probably true, too. I, I imagine. The, um, the living embodiment of, uh, what's his name in Tremors? Bert. Bert from Tremors. Gunner. Yeah. It's, 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 Which will be a Patreon shirt coming next couple weeks. This is, Pear is making it. Yes. All right. So he sent us in some of his encounters he's had over the years. So we're going to read through them. We're going to have some fun. Uh, guess to make long stories short, I figured I'd bring up my stories and see if y'all want them. Well, too bad, Brennan. They're already being read on here. <laughs> so here they are, starting with the least interesting and working my way up. So number one. Saw a strange light in the sky. No noise. Very bright night. or so I think very bright light. But still didn't see a shape or anything. Now what makes these lights very odd is the following. It was like a giant flying LED screen. Five lights. And they were in front of whatever it was. They did not put off a lot of light that you would expect an aircraft light to do. And they were strobing in very odd ways. It went, on, it went from left to right. As one faded, the other one would fade on, and they still stayed for a few seconds. So That last part again, what you said is one faded. As one faded, another one would fade on. So okay. Like, so as the one in the front there, was like going away. The five lights in the front are pulsing. Yeah. So as one's starting to dim out, one would dim on. Okay. And dim out, dim on. Dim, like, okay. Like it's, one, it's five different things with a big light behind it. Right. I have no idea what this is. You know, classic kind of UFO. You can't tell, you know, unidentified, you know, for a reason. Let's talk about some things. I have I have no idea. You know, we'll talk to Brandon here at the end of the week, you know, for Patreon night. Yeah. We do two of those a month, so everybody come hang out for Patreon. Yeah, join our Patreon. Uh, Get but no, access. Pa- hang out. It's always fun. But have you seen the – which I love the idea of this. I think it's better. I don't like fireworks as far as what they do to the environment. I can't get near them most of the time because my allergies. Yeah, the sulfates. Yeah, if it blows the wrong way, it'll, like, kill me. Yeah. But I love watching fireworks. I love the lights. Have you seen the new drones? Yeah. The drone light shows? Yeah. So uh, Gaylord, up by the cabin, yes, just did that for their Ostego Lake. I think I took you to – no, I didn't. We were going to go to Ostego. Yeah, it was way up there, yeah. Uh, Ostego. Uh, they just did their their fireworks. They replaced it this year with it. It was great. The test for that, though, I was watching some of the guys do the test mm-hmm. before the light show. It looks like UFOs. Yeah. You can really believe, because they do, like, balls and stuff like that. If you're from a distance, you can't see the drones. Just You just see the lights. Yeah, because the lights blend into each other. Right, yeah. So it looks like a big, solid, glowing object. Yeah. So, and then they strobe, and then they do all these flashes of color. And it's really crazy how complex. Hmm. It's one guy doing it. Yeah. It's a pattern they design online right, first. Right, right. And then they bring it out there, and they just kind of make sure none of the cameras explode. Right. <laughs> just make sure, yeah, it's all functioning as intended. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know when this happened. Obviously, this could have been two decades ago when that really wasn't a thing. Right, yeah. I really say, I don't know, the last five years, it's become more and more popular. And for sure, yeah. Like oh, Indian for sure. Lake by us spends... On too much money on fireworks. Uh, everybody loves Indian Lake fireworks show. Yeah, it's one of absolutely. the better ones in Ohio. Mm-hmm. But they spend too much money on it. A lot of money. I want to replace this with this. It's less noise, less pollutants. Like, do you know how long we find the fire, like the fireworks shells in the lake? Pretty much forever, all year round. Forever. Yeah. Or find them from the 80s. Yeah, still there. I still find them in my front yard from time to time. So that's kind of the first thing with Brandon's first encounter. I kind of comes to mind. Yeah, it sounds something like that. Like, it could, could be. Have, it could be. We weren't there. We're not talking to Brandon, right, right, so this right. is guesswork. Right. But a solid, big light. S- it w- I was just, what's the word term? Speculative. Uh, well, it's not biology. I know. That's what Speculative I, investigations. There we go. We're like Daryl Sims. So it was like a giant flying LED screen, which makes me think of, maybe he could see the individual lights a part of the big thing. Yeah. Like LED lights, uh-huh. which would make me more think of these drone shows mm-hmm. from a distance. And then maybe the big ones were groups of them flashing colors and doing like almost like you remember like, like they do like Saturn patterns. It's kind of what it makes me say, think of. I, I know what you're saying. Like yeah. a ring around a big ball. Right. Yep. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, that sounds like a plausible 
explanation for what he, he may, I, may have Brandon seen. Brandon will let us know, I'm sure. Right, yeah. I'd like to get some more uh, info on it, but it sounds like something – I've seen something – not saying it's similar, but I think I talked about before when I had seen like a UFO when I was out back behind work, uh, taking the trash out. But it was just like a a line of lights, but not like the Starlink line of lights, but like where the lights were. We just so if anybody missed me on Mark Muncie and Erica's show, mm-hmm. um, Eerie Travels, check it out. We talked about that. Not your encounter. Mm-hmm. She had a very similar one. Where it's just a string of lights. She seen Starlink. And at the same time, seen a different UFO. Mm, okay. So everybody told her she just seen Starlink. Right, yeah. But no, there was something else going on. And I think they do that on purpose. Yeah, I would. Oh, yeah. I think that they move those Starlinks around for, because we talked about it with other Brandon, Oklahoma Brandon, with his weird sighting. And everybody's like, no, it's Starlink. Right, yeah. They had a, you know, that was not Starlink. I'll argue. And the people is like, no, it's the bursting. Of, I, no. I don't care. You can say whatever you want. Yeah. You know, it's. And I'm, normally, this is your opinion. Like, like, you make all that up. You could, you're just saying stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no proof of that. No, it's speculation. Yeah. So I don't know. I could see that. I mean, do you think it could? It could be very classical UFO it government could, technology. It, it could be because he's in that uh, Brown Mountain Lights area. You know. Yeah. Now, whether it's near that the Brown Mountains, I don't know. But I don't think this doesn't sound like Brown Mountain Lights as far as right. the phenomena. But it's a weird area. But yeah, that's what I was getting at. It's just a weird area with weird. Phenomena, so Phenomena. we haven't done that in a while. Ah, oh, the Muppets. Even though that was probably the worst rendition you've ever done of it. I'm very. I had a migraine yesterday, and yeah. everybody didn't know I have optic migraines. So like, it makes me. I don't do anything that whole day. It's they suck. And then the whole next two days, I feel just like trash. Yeah, just recovering. Yeah, it, it really it like. It's, yeah, I haven't had one for many, many, many years. But when I've I had, had them for almost a year. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. yeah so. It was probably the sun. Could have been. You're pretty red. Yes. No, so, I mean, classic UFO could have been. I don't know. It's really hard with UFO stories. Yeah, I know. When the but interesting enough, not here, interesting you know? enough, there's keep your eyes in the sky, people, because weird stuff sky. happening all the time. All right, next. I battled with sleep paralysis for many years, so much that I had to duct tape on anything that has a light on in my room that I can't turn off. I have gone as far as going into my BIOS of my PC to disable every single light possible while the PC is off. I also have 100% blackout curtains that are all taped to the walls to allow absolutely zero light to get in. I do this for the simple reason. Can't be shadow people if you can't see shadows. And I don't feel like dealing with anything I can't shoot. I have a theory as well as to why these things bug me as well. And I'll share it if you want. I also have reoccurring dream stories that tie in directly to this as well. We hmm. should have shared them here. No, Brandon, rewrite back in. Let us know. Yeah, please do. So I like that theory, though. He's talked about it on the Patreon nights about having, like, shadow people encounters and stuff like that. Yeah. No, that that works. Can't see shadows if there's no shadows. Right. It's good logic because if, if they're there to, like, intimidate you, you know— like See, their pre- how, what do you their- think about sleep paralysis? Have we ever really done a full episode on sleep paralysis? I know we've talked about it plenty. Well, it always but pops up with shadow people encounters yeah. and hat man, you know. I don't, I mean, my only experience, I can only tell from my own personal experience with it, but like, you're in that state. It's almost like, you know, your eyes are closed, but you can still see through your eyes, like around you. You can hear everything around you. You can sense everything going on your around you. Your eyes were closed. I think so. That's just how it feels to me. Like, it feels like my eyes were closed, but I could still, I feel feel like my eyes were, I don't know, maybe they weren't, but in my head, how everything just felt, my eyes were closed, but I could still see out of my eyes because I could still see the room. The one time I vividly remember it was I was sitting in front of my couch. I had just gotten off at work. This is when I worked two jobs, but I just got work done with the first shift on the AM job. So I had about like a two hour window before I had to go to the evening job, which is where I work now. But sometimes I just come home and I just sit there and just rest for a moment. And I sat in front of my couch and just passed out sitting down. And I remember hearing like, I remember like hearing noises like downstairs, people talking, someone walking out of something and it woke me up. But when I woke up, I couldn't, like, move my arms and legs. I could not move them. But I could see them, and I couldn't move my head left to right, but I could move my eyes a little bit. But, it, like I said, it just felt like my eyes were closed because I was aware. 
but then I kept, then I started hearing the noises and then I started hearing someone coming up my steps and the couch is like right beside the steps. They come right up into my living room and I can hear them. Here they come. Boom, boom, boom. Coming right up the steps, coming right up the steps. And right when they got there, it, there was nobody there. So it, it really scared me. And like, you're, you can feel your own anxiety, like going way up. And I just want to like scream or move my arms or just move in general. Cause I'm aware where I'm sitting and then I'm aware, like, I'm trying to scream or I'm trying to yell, but nothing will come out. It's, it's a very uh, unsettling feeling, probably is the best way to describe it, but couldn't move. But I could see my hands, couldn't move them. I could see my legs, couldn't move them. I could, I tried to turn my neck, couldn't. And then I tried to yell, couldn't do any of it. But I could still hear the stuff going on around me. Freaked me out until finally it's just like you snap out of it. Um, like uh, When the abduction ends? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's it's the best way I can describe it is like uh, have you ever just been underwater and you're like you're trying to get to the top you can't breathe and then right when you finally break through and get that gasp of air it's like that feeling and I don't know it's weird you know how I haven't said this in a long time every time you open your mouth yeah I'm not you're abducted by alien because that's no that is a big chunk of the abduction phenomena for people that I think finish it off so sleep paralysis I think is such a hodgepodge of things. I think there's the physical syndrome. I think there are more... I don't know if it's demonic. I just did a whole episode about the devil from the Bible. Yeah. You know, which everybody seemed to really like, which I was happy about. I never, didn't know how it was going to go. That's good news. Um, But you just... I don't know. Because like an old hag. Like the old hag. Right. That sits on your chest. Yeah. yeah. But there's also the connection with the shadow people and then stuff like greys. Right. Yeah. You know, I think it's one of those things like when we talk about shadow people themselves that it may be several different things that your brain is having the same reaction to. Hmm. Yeah, it's like it might just be in that space in between of conscious and unconscious where... Like dreams. I think there are dreams that have meaning. I think there are dreams that don't have meaning. I think dreams are chemical responses that your brain are dumping. Mm -hmm. But I also think they're you're interacting with stuff as well. Yeah. I think it's all of it. I, I, I don't think there's one right or one wrong answer. For sure, yeah. And that we sleep know. sleep paralysis that... is a t the same thing. Yeah. Because... I do believe that dreams help you work out stuff. For sure. And there is so much evidence for the, the information stored. So they talk about, like, a lot of times dreams are just there to help you store from short term to long term mm -hmm. and kind of sort through what's worth it, what's not worth mm -hmm. it. Mine always throws out people's names. I don't know why. I would like them to keep those. Right, yeah. But, I mean, it's like, like ah, let's keep their face and their whole life backstory. Get rid of that piece of information. Right, right? yeah. Uh, the files is blank. There, there may be. We maybe have to start that on Patreon. Maybe that would be our new activity. It would be a dream journal. We start dream. We I start have, trying to log them. I don't. Yeah, I have the weirdest dreams sometimes. But uh, so it's funny we're talking about this because I just watched a thing last night about this guy telling his experience and he started like paying attention to his dreams and uh, it he he started his theory is now because he used to read uh, or he still reads a lot of Carl Jung the yeah. What's he a philosopher? Not philosopher, oh, no, psych no. psychiatrist, psychiatrist, or psychiatrist, something like that. Yeah, um, but he talked about his dreams and stuff and analyzing them. And this guy was well, Jimmy Dore. He was just on Joe Rogan's podcast, but I've watched him for Jimmy Dore for like four or five years now. And he, but he's talking about uh, his his dreams and stuff, and he started paying attention to him. And he had an experience. So he thinks dreams are like. Your connection, it's like a its like a connection kind of with God trying to speak to you or can communicate can that, with yeah, you. Yeah, sure. And it's just a medium in which uh, messages can be told. It's way you can – like your own subconscious projecting uh, – it's, it's a lot of things. I, I can't explain at the moment on the top of my head. But his – the example he had that made him realize it was all real because Carl Jung also had his experience where he had seen a symbol – um, in his dreams, never knew what it, the symbols meant and stuff until he came across a book. And when he was reading the book, it was like a, about alchemy. He seen a symbol in that book that he had been seeing in his dreams, but he had never seen it before in real life. But he seen it in his dreams first, then he seen it in the book. So he realized, I like, just had an idea. Sorry, I continue, but I just had something pop into my head that. Okay, well, that he realized that synchronicity, and then mm -hmm. he made the connection. Of, okay, there's something to this where. Where in my dreams, there's no reason I should have been able to see this in my own dream before I ever even laid eyes on it in 
right, no, physical yeah, reality. Yeah, yeah. So there's something there going on. Tons, and that's happened. There's so, so many documented cases of that. With that Jimmy Dore, he was telling about his experience, and he and he had a dream that he remembers vividly where he was in a clearing of like – he was like in the woods, and it opened up to this big clearing, and this creature approached him. And it was like – it had like a man's body or with like a lion – um something like a lion dog like mixed head mm-hmm. um and it reached out and he said it reached out to him and he thought it was going to like crush him and kill him but it reached his hand out and he said so he just reached out to it too and it grabbed onto his hand and said very gently and it started walking him into the woods and he didn't never seen this creature didn't know what it was he was very confused by it had no idea and then it carried him in and talked to him in the woods and it told him like like he asked it why you know why it's here and it's, it's basically saying like you're gonna need to like venture into the woods like of yourself and like deal with the issues that you've been putting off for you. So he had no idea, like very confused and no idea what was going on. Flash forward, he was flipping through. He was reading a book, and when he turned the page, there was that thing he saw in his dream, and it was like this old god of whatever religion. I don't know what it was, but it was like it represented. Um, I, I forget what the creature represented, but it was exactly like you facing felt. your, huh? What he felt. Yeah. And it was the same physical, like description in the book is exactly what he's seen in his dream, but he'd never seen it in real life ever before that. So it was the same thing young had. You had that connection where you seen something in your dream before you, and then you seen it in reality. And he, he thought yeah, like that was like a synchronicity and you know, you love that word, No, but so, with synchronicities, he thinks it's yeah. like a sign you're on the right path or you're doing the right I thing. I do believe in synchronicities, mm-hmm. I just there's it gets overused a lot. Absolutely, yeah. So I don't hate it. I just Emily hates it more than I do. No sleep paralysis with these shadow people. I just had an idea with dreams. Like you brought it up. Okay. So crazy thing with the human brain and dreams. You know it's impossible for the human brain to make up a face. Okay. So the human brain always picks. It, it could be random people you see on the street. Right. You see one time at the mall. And they'll throw them into your dream later, mm-hmm. just as whether it's filler characters or whatever. Right. But there's so much evidence to suggest the human brain cannot make a face. Okay. So with sleep paralysis, we talk about the fae will often put on faces that you want them to wear. Okay. So what if these shadow people are the the formless fae? Because you can't give them a face because you're in this dream state. Ah. They can't get a read off you, so they stay blank. Hmm. Or void. Right. You know, because it's void Black. to us, you know, because right. we can't perceive probably whatever light spectrum they're actually in. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. And that just, to me, seemed like a crazy thought we'll probably dive into more. Yeah, I think that's a good theory. Because it's, it's weird, because there's always something with the shadow people and the fae and all this stuff. I think I think a lot of the alien encounters are fae. Now, yeah. I'm not saying, like, we've talked about on the show that for me to believe in a true alien, mm-hmm. like an actual out of, from another planet, not interdimensional. Right, right, right. A true flesh and blood alien from another planet in our galaxy, I would need to see some extremely weird new biology. Right. Not saying that you can't co-evolve or convergently evolve fingers and... Well, I mean, they're either going to look like hu- human-ish, you know, because if we're like the best design plan, or they're going to look like a crab. That's what I was going to say, the crab joke. <laughs> and then the uh, cryptonauts talked about the bearded crab people. Okay. Like there, there was a there was a UFO that crashed, and a guy accidentally seen him crash. Yeah. And they were like big bearded crab mm. men things. They weren't like human men. Right. But they called them men because they, like they were all guys. Right. And he's like, and they're talking like, yeah, this is kind of like a pit stop. Like we're we're not supposed to be here. We yeah. got places to go. So it's like Zoidbergs with beards. Yeah, they were like more like crabs. Yeah. Like Zoidbergs very humanoid crab. These were very crab shaped. Oh, man, I was I was hoping he was real. <laughs> I would love him to be Imagine real. Imagine nineteen fifty, whatever it was, when they've seen these things and you're walking around the ship and like, oh, it's a ship, and you're, <laughs> yeah, hey, we're all doctors. Uh, screw your baby, I need those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Zoidberg is a great character. Before we continue on, let's play a Flavors of the Forest ad. You ready? Yep. Welcome to the latest episode of. Uh, cooking with J Clone seventy seven, and today I'm joined by a special guest, the Veggie Man. Say hello, Veggie Man. <laughs> so you've got a special treat for us today. You're going to be cooking uh, a new veggie dish, a vegan dish for us today. And uh, what do you got on the menu? Ooh, artichoke asparagus spread, eh? 
Anyway, I don't particularly like this, but I'm going to go on a limb and give it a try. Oh, my goodness. It's delicious. What's the secret ingredient? Flavors of the forest Bigfoot breath? Raw garlic dust? Wow. They freeze dry the highest quality of ingredients raw to capture the flavor you won't find in stores? Wow. Thank you, Veggie Man. I'm going to add this to my kitchen. That's Bigfoot Breath by Flavors of the Forest. You can you can get yours at flavorsforest.com and you can cook forward slash corn. Sorry, flavorsforest.com forward slash corn and you can cook just like the Veggie Man. Why are so many dogs suffering from health issues? Actress Katherine Heigl, who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation, says she's seeing some more issues with dogs' joints, odors, and health than ever before. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to support any dog's health, their food. So she's decided to create something she could actually feel good about feeding her dogs. It's called Superfood Complete. Superfood Complete is made with over the 30 of the healthiest ingredients on the planet, including several superfoods vital to your dog's health. Badlands Ranch also sponsors the Jason Debus Heigl Foundation, which has helped rescue thousands of dogs and place them in loving homes. Dogs across America are trying this food and experiencing amazing health benefits. My dog Grace loves it. She just gobbles it up. Go check out Badlands Ranch. You can get there at badlandsranch.com forward slash corn crew and order right now to get up to 50% off your regular priced order with a 90 day money back guarantee. If you want your dog to experience all these incredible things, go to B A D L A N D S ranch.com slash corn crew today. Ah, uh, the veggie man. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, moving on. This is a big one. This is his last one for this time. Okay. Now this one, I really... Okay, I thought I almost did something bad. Now this one, I really want y'all to take your take on. I thought he said, don't want you to talk about for a second. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, screw this thing that's recording. Let me right, just yeah. throw this out. Mind you, this hasn't just happened to me, but also my aunt and my brother. The finger breaker himself, all separate times. Remember that? We picked on his brother. Oh, yes, 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 yes. For 4th of... No, not 4th of July. It was another... It was another holiday. Yeah. Memorial Day. Something, yeah. My aunt, when she was a kid, and my brother, well, within the last five years. So I'll go into detail on mine. And obviously, that's the one I know the best. Y'all know me, but now... And I know I'm not scared of very much of anything. Even the shadow people I get annoyed with. I sit up and tell them to F off before laying back down. <laughs> Don't feed your demons. When I grew up, it was an old farmland. Like my grandfather grew up in that type of old far- family land. I know these woods like inside and out. Every tree, every pile of dirt, all of it. I know all the native wildlife as well. I haven't seen or heard anything new in a few decades at this point. So when I, was n- or so when I say I'm not scared of these woods, I mean it. I know every inch of it. Well, two years ago, July 4th, everyone and their mother was launching fireworks. I wanted to relax, so I go grab my rifle and my pistol on my hip, and I started walking into the woods that sit on the dock by the pond and listen to the fireworks, the bugs, the frogs. It was peaceful. And who knows, maybe I'll get a little, I'll get a clap, a coyote. A big problem around here, I can't drop enough of them. Everything was fine until about five yards from the woods, I got a weird feeling coming from over me. But as you all know, I'm stubborn and ignorant, at this point, I could still hear some wildlife, so I wasn't concerned. Well, I have about a thousand meter walk to get back to the dock. Let me tell you, the further into these woods I got, the absolute worst of the feeling I got. It wasn't fear; it was straight up dread. So let me pause there for a second. It's, it's for people that haven't experienced that part of the phenomena, don't get what that means. The difference between fear, fear and, dread. and dread. Okay. Like with whether it's infra- I haven't read this at all, so I I don't like to until I just kind of skip. Right. You don't know, like, with infrasound, it's not fear. 
It's dread. It's a it's a prey response. It's just an uneasy feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's a prey response. Like a lot of these guys, supposed to get hit with the infrasound from Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. You know, they wake up kind of their truck covered in their pee. You know, it's it's because it's not. It's a different part of your brain. It's hitting, and it's this hyper dread of the prey side of you being like, "Ah, oh, we got to get out of here right this freaking second. We're gonna die." Right. And we know with lions and stuff like that, or tigers is the big one where we put the video up there a long time ago. But that reporter in the zoo with the tiger that hit him with infrasound, and he literally, his knees locked and he couldn't move. He wasn't crying, he wasn't screaming, He's but he was stuck. so, he was stuck. Yeah. And they even proven that tigers use that to hunt some uh, deer species. It'll hit him with infrasound, and it'll stun him, and they can walk up right up and eat him. Yeah. So, yeah, just saying. So it was dread. At this point, halfway point, it was dead silent aside from the fireworks in the distance, but I pressed on. At this point... I'm circling the pond, still no wildlife making any noise, and it's very odd as the frogs and cicadas never shut up around here. Even I got about 100 meters from the dock when my body just locks up and not only would allow me would not allow me to take another step. Keep in mind, this feeling has been building and building for I guess my body finally OD'd on dread. So most people have a fight or flight mode. I just seem to have a fight mode. I drop to my knee and swing my rifle around. I flicked on the green dot to assist me with aiming. The moon was out, and using the optic, I was not particularly useless, or, you, uh, sorry, not particularly, unless I flicked on the flashlight as well. Something told me there was a horrible idea at this time, so I didn't. I scanned, and I seen nothing. My body was telling me to get out of these woods, as seeing how I grew up in Appalachia. As a youngster, I was told the basics of don't whistle, don't run in the woods at night, blah, blah, blah. Here I am, armed to the teeth, with an AR-15 chambered and 300 blackout hollow points and a 9 mil on my hip. Two knives. I have easily 90 pounds on me and with this spare mag I carried. And I am retreating out of my own woods. I'm not turning back in the direction I feel this thing coming from. I keep my gun trained. Uh, uh, that was as I slowly backed up out of the woods. It took me about 20 minutes to get out at that pace. The scary part is, the feeling was slowly getting worse the closer I got to the dock. Never got that before, or the further you got out from it. I stayed nearly uh, clipped. I still couldn't go any further if I wanted to. It didn't break until I was about half an acre from the wood line, at which point I had already dropped to my knee again, waiting to see if anything came out, uh, out now that I was better visibility. I waited there for a few minutes before I got back up again and started towards the house. I never heard anything, not one single footstep or something crunching the leaves, nor anything of just dead silence. The animals didn't make any noise for the rest of the night either. This day, to this day, sometimes at night, I look out the window into those woods or outside, and I look into the woods and I get the feeling that something's looking back at me. Obviously, I'm dumb and still go out in the woods at night. However, some nights, if you go into the wood line and feel it starting up again, I say, nah, I go back inside. Keep mine, <laughs> my dumb butt, Chase rabid coyotes into the woods for fun, and there's a mo- <laughs> they're about the most dangerous thing we have up here. And don't yeah, it's you're laughing because we know Brandon. <laughs> I know. I didn't even get it for black bears when they were camping in the mountains. Yeah, I just I see him like see like a rabid coyote and Brandon's fun. running after it. So what do you think about that? I like I said mm. I didn't read it and it very very, very interesting infrasoundy. Yeah, very. Uh, but what? The thing is, I it's not really speaking to anything like, like specifically Bigfoot or anything like that. No, I don't think so. Infrasound's a you know a weird a weird phenomenon in itself yeah. in in life because it's kind of weird uh, what animals can produce super sounds. Yeah, not just infrasound, but super sounds, and what animals can't. You know, our two loudest animals are the biggest and one of the smallest. Right. Yeah. The white bell bird. And the, the white bell bird. bird. The blue whale. Blue whale. Yeah. They all. They. I think. Two decibels higher is the white bell bird than the blue whale. It's just insane. Which are both extremely loud. But then, uh, you know, we're talking about different frequencies, though. The bell bird can't be heard a thousand miles away, and the blue whale can. Right, yeah. So the sound is very unique. Different. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know. It really kind of seems infrasoundy. This yeah. dread, this panic, or this, and it's not panic as in like he's, he took off running, but this fight, like he said, like he defended himself, like he kept posting right he walked out backwards because he felt like there was something there watching him now with infrasound with bigfoot uh we did a story a long time ago do you remember the the tree stand one the deer stand 
Hmm. Long Start. time ago. Uh, so they found near where they were going to turkey hunt, they found a homemade blind. And later on, they figured out it was probably a Bigfoot hunting blind. Because it was huge, it was weird, it was, but it was like right on top of theirs. Yeah. And so he was kind of like, "What's this hunter doing?" You know, it may have been Patreon episode we did this. He's like, "What is this hunter doing?" You know, my my spot's right there. Yeah. Like, come on, like you know, you can see where I'm at, and you built yours right underneath, basically mine. So they sat in that one because it was on the ground. Uh huh. So they're like, well, you know, it's on our our spot. We're just going to use it. Yeah. And they felt this hit of dread. And he felt like it was coming from inside with him. Hmm. He thought it was a purely, until for a long time, he thought it was a purely paranormal encounter. Mm -hmm. Like a demon or something was getting him. And him and his buddy came up front, like, he was throwing up and he was he peed himself and they got up to the truck. And they don't, he said he didn't remember seeing anything. Didn't remember half the run to the truck. Yeah. Just kind of woke up and they were like, he's like, the smell didn't hit until we were halfway home. Then we realized mm. how much we stunk and stuff yeah. like you know from peeing and you know puking and oh gotcha okay like they stunk themselves yeah 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 and he's like we didn't know like we you know a mix of adrenaline and you know once all those compounds start wearing off it all comes flooding back reality comes back yeah so to Brandon's motion of this dock being the epicenter that with the infrasound supposed encounters with Sasquatch like I said there's, there's deer hunters. Or those turkey hunters, they felt like it was coming from inside where they were. Right, yeah. So it doesn't always feel like where it's actually coming from may not be where it appears to be the epicenter. Okay. That's what I'm getting at. So the if there was a Bigfoot here, it could have been way behind the dock. Right, And yeah. it just, you know, as far as our brains are concerned, it's at that moment. It's at that spot. Mm -hmm. Your brain's trying to give you something to fight against or run from. Right, a, po a certain point yeah, to, yeah. to deal with. Um. I don't know, the infrasound thing in Tigers is very unique, where the locking up the legs and stuff like that, and he kind of talked about that a little bit. Yeah. You know, uh, we've seen that with Tigers. Elephants, you know, we talked about the suicide village in Africa with elephants, that all these elephants cause these men to commit suicide. Right, yeah. And the suicide cliffs in California. Um, Any big cats in that area? Like, what would be the biggest big cat? Uh, I mean, there's mountain lions. They mountain lions? The, the DNR says there's no mountain lions there. There are. Okay. I'll, I'll, and then... The alien do, black cat phenomenon is also down there. Do mountain lions produce infrasound? I don't think either mountain lions or jaguars produce infrasound. Okay. At least to any notable level. I don't know that off the top of my head for sure. I've never heard of it. I think as far as big cats go, it's just tigers. Yeah. It would have been a bad day if it was a big cat that was stalking Brandon. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Our Patreon episode this week is all about weird animal tracks and dead bodies. Uh -huh. And it just... Big cat attacks are very, very rare in right. North America. Right. Even when you're like, do you ever see that reporter? Oh, where she, it walks right under her She's feet, like, basically. Was she? Most people are like, why is she so calm? They had she, night vision on the camera. They were dark. Yeah, she, she couldn't see. She, she thought it was a dog. Yeah. She's like, uh, somebody's dog just brushed past my leg, and it's like a hundred fifty pound mountain lion. Right. Yeah. And but just you see, the mountain lion was just like going to a spot. Yeah. Because she reacted to it appropriately. Right. Yeah. She would didn't back away from it, but she didn't. You know. You know, intimidated at all. Right, yeah. So the cat was looking like, okay, it's not prey. Yeah. It's not a threat. So I'm just going to keep going where I'm going. Like the guy with the elephant in Africa I told you about, where he told the camera guy. Oh, yeah. Don't move. Don't run away. Well, he's like, he's like, if you move, you'll kill us both. Yeah. He's going to charge us. And he's going to throw sand, and he's going to get right up to us. And then after that, he was going to be calm. And he did. 100%. 10,000 pound animal. It's so scary. And he walked all around. He didn't touch it or nothing, but you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, as long as you don't, you know, go too close to him now or whatever. He knows we're not a threat. He knows we're yeah. not scared of him. Right, yeah. So, you know, we can walk around here and he's just going to leave us be as long as we leave him be. Right, yep. Yeah. And yep, he did. So I don't know. It really, to me, screams come in for a sound. I don't it, know. Very much so. I agree with that. I can't really think of any other. I mean, when we start getting to elementals and Appalachia itself has so many things connected to the earth itself. And what if, like, you know, the, the Fae or, you know, whatever is associated with that area, whatever paranormal being there is, they just – what if they can produce an infrasound-like phenomena, like they can produce it? I, I think there's something to that yeah, or a similar phenomena because I don't fully think the Bigfoot or the paranormal inf infrasound people are calling it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's fully infrasound. Okay. Because it's not been – not saying – so Bigfoot stuff's very rare to record. You know, a couple like the Ohio Howl and then the Sierra Sounds. You know, mm -hmm. there's been just a handful of what I believe could or is 
truly Bigfoot or whatever Bigfoot is sounds recorded. Right, right. As far as infrasound, like, we should be picking that up. Like, you can be a lot farther away and see an infrasound on readers. Right. But it could be very rare. It could be a defense mechanism. It could be a threatening thing. Like, it right. could be just something they use to really get you moving. Mm-hmm. But then why don't we have it in areas like Hocking Hills where we have the terrifying accounts with Bigfoot that we believe is a breeding area? They're doing everything else scary. If they have that ability, why don't they just get you moving? Because infrasound will get you moving. They don't have to do anything. You know, they produce one pulse. Right. I, want, I don't know if it's a learned behavior. Well, that's or what a, I'm saying. Yeah. I'm agreeing with you that it may not be a Bigfoot thing. It may be a more You're right. paranormal thing. And it very well could be a Bigfoot thing. But I'm just saying there's there's – there's a lot of other options as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm agreeing. Yeah. It, it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be tied into Bigfoot. Exactly, yeah. Like a lot of the, which is nothing wrong with, well, a lot of Bigfoot community ties that in with Bigfoot with no other sightings. Right, yeah, exactly. You know, so it could, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. It's it's pretty interesting. Why has Brandon not has shared this with us before? You know, or more recently, I guess. Or has he just been gun shy? <laughs> That was Holy dumb. Moly. Yeah, that was dumb. I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. No, I don't know. <laughs> the Faye. Oh. It could be because he has all that metal on him all the time. <laughs> yeah. The Faye doesn't like yeah. metal. <laughs> Maybe just this particular night they were like, all right, they're they're making they're flashing all these fireworks, creating all this noise, and now he's bringing all this metal into our woods. Well, Enough. Weird, weird thing is the tree knocking that I had experienced yeah. was on the 4th of July, too. That is weird, ain't it? Yeah, because that's why I thought it was fireworks going off. Hmm. I don't know if they get more confident. Or if it's disturbed, like they get riled up. Yeah, it's not a good thing for a lot of species. Yeah. A lot of animals don't enjoy it. No, they don't at all. When I say animals, I think, and we talked about a lot, I think that carries over, I think there's a paranormal ecosystem. The only difference between paranormal and science is understanding. I think there's so much more into the world than we can really, we really understand right this second. Right, right, We're experiencing things like, kind of intertwining with us, but, like, we're seeing shadows on the cave wall, essentially. Right, right. We're not getting the full picture what of what these things are. Is that Plato's cave or something? Yeah. Like yeah. Something on, one of those. One of those guys. So we're not getting the full picture of what these beings are. And they may not be intelligent. They may be, like I said, animals that are just off kilter in a different light spectrum. Right. That we're experiencing side effects, and they're experiencing side effects of us. Hmm. So these fireworks, these explosions, these magnesium and these sulfide, you know, all these chemicals that are exploding and burning in the atmosphere. Yeah. Could really bother them. It's a lot of energy being released. And a lot of a lot of variety of chemical reactions going on. And which, sound waves being shot sure. off. Sure. So you're hitting all these different spectrums of reality. Yeah. And we talked about it with our uh, Demon Core episode with, like, when they talked about Hiroshima and Nagasaki, like, the living fire and stuff like that. Whether that was actual fire elementals or interdimensional beings they brought in or things that lived here. That were on fire. Yeah. That we normally can't see, but a nuclear explosion lit them on fire. Lit them, on, Literally light them on fire and burn them. Like, rah, you know. Yeah. And they may not be burning like we burn. You know, it may be burning off excess energy. It may, you know, yeah. it could be all kinds of things, you know, associated with them. Right. But I don't know. It's very, the infrasound thing is very odd. Hopefully, we gave you some semblance of an idea of what this could be. Yeah. So please I mean, write us in about the middle one again, and we'll do an update. For sure. Uh, and then write us in again what you think about when this comes out, about all these. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else to add? This is, this is an interesting one. Thanks for sharing with us, Thank Brandon. Thank you for sharing. If you have a story you'd like to share, or stories, or encounters, you know, all the ands and aboves, of any kind of paranormal, cryptozoological, or ufological ideas, or encounters, please reach out to us at Podcast at gmail.com, or go to the website, com. I think that's it. That's it? I have been the great and powerful mystery. And I've been Jay. We'll catch you next week, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Thank you for listening to Cribbins of the Corn Podcast. Remember, the best way to support the show is share it with a friend. But if you are craving more of the Jay clones and more from Mr. E, there's always extra content on Patreon and our paid member space on cryptidsofthecorn.com. We'll catch you next time with more exciting, fun, and informative information. Bye! Bye.